All right, all right. Thank y'all for tuning in to Resilient Truths Bible Study. Today we're going to be studying on manipulation. I'm praying that God do this word because I ain't had time to sit with the scriptures. I've been riding deep today, but God has truly blessed. So somebody pray us in. Mother Shalon, pray us in. Lord, we trust you all forgive us of our sins, not unknowingly. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, bless those in the nursing homes, into the hospitals, going to rehabilitation. Yes, Lord, Lord. you touch the sick and afflicted that's in their homes all over the world, Lord. Add a mighty name, yes, Jesus. Lord. Go into the jails, into the prisons, Lord. Touch, save, deliver, move by yes, your spirit. Lord. Those who are saved, Lord, came high, I did not see you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Those that are homeless, touch them, Lord. Bless them with food and shelter. Cover with your blood. Put a head of protection yes, around them, Lord. Add a mighty name of Jesus. Yes, the Lord, Jesus, bless them. Dr. Bell, give a yes. word that said the yes. Lord on the day, Lord. Yes. Word of mouth, Lord. Everybody yes. name of Jesus, touch and bless this congregation, Lord. Yes. Yes. Strengthen them, word they weak, make them strong, Lord. Yes. Yes. I know them take high, give them this to you, Lord. Everybody yes. name of Jesus. Yes. Those who travel, yes. give them travel mercies, Lord, in Jesus. Yes. Touch yes. your bishop, your apostles, your yes. pastors, your ministers, yes. your missionaries, yes. your friends. I know them take my heart and touch in you, Lord. Yes. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And Lord, you set us off in love, unity, peace, and one accord, Lord. Yes. Open up our understanding and let us work, apply the word in our hearts, Lord. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name I pray. Thank yes, God. Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, feed your people. Amen. Calm your calm my spirit. Lord, you know I ain't had time to sit with this, so you're going to have to do this again. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Like I say, we're going to be talking about manipulation today. I have truly lived this word today. And I got my sidekick with me, so she lived it too. <laughs> manipulation. Woo, the, 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 what you call wolves and sheep's clothing. Stuff like that. We're going to begin with Ezekiel 34 and 4. You know what? I need my glasses. I don't know why I'm trying to act like I can see them. Change my purse, but I can't even find nothing here. It's got too much stuff in it. Okay, Sharon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ezekiel 34 and 4. I forgot my Bible, too. Oh, wow. It's in the car. <laughs> Ezekiel 34 and 4. Normally I use it on my phone, but we look using my phone right now. Ezekiel 34 and 4. The disease have yet not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but was forced. Yes, this is the scripture I was talking about the other day, Mother Shalom. We, um, the disease have ye not strengthened. We're talking about the leaders and the apostles, the pastors, the preachers, the teachers. We're doing all this church, but the disease ain't being healed. You know, the people being that sick ain't being healed. You know, what are we doing? What are we just standing up in the pool on our soapbox? You know, when the gospel come to, you know, the word, you know, the anointing destroys the yoke. You know, people got to come in and go out differently. That's what this scripture is talking about. You know, nothing's being done. Nothing's being changed. People doing what they're doing, but, you know, are we using the Holy Ghost? Is we, are we allowing the Holy Ghost to, you know, conduct the services, or are we just on our soapbox? Passing offering plates and, you know, doing what we're supposed to do. She went outside to get my Bible. <laughs> yeah. So that's what that scripture is talking about. You know, when we when they come in and they don't receive nothing to hold them, you know, they they some of them look in the door and they close the door. Some of them come in and they go back out, you know. You know, that's why the seats be empty or whatever. Um, we gotta when they come in, do they get fed? Do they come in and, and get a word from the Lord? Do they get a touch from the Lord? Or do they come in and they just, you know, get flesh? You know, proper lying instead of prophesying. Mm -hmm. What do they get? 
Um, there's, a, there's a scripture in the New Testament, I think it's 1 John 2, that is, you know, it confirms that word. But let's head on over to um, the New Testament. Let's look at Matthew 7 and 15. Matthew 7 and 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Yes, we experienced that today. Mm -hmm. We experienced that. We went and got bank statements. Oh. Documentation beats speculation. Mm -hmm. We got bank statements. Hundreds of dollars being taken out the church account. The church account... Um, you know, being used to benefit other things that wasn't related to the church. So, we false prophets. We remember that scripture where it say everybody that say Lord, Lord ain't gonna make it in. Right, right. You know, don't worry about what they say. Pay attention to what they do. Their behavior. Remember, I told you I'm a behavior analyst, and I look at you know that's how God look at us. He look at our behavior because our behavior expresses what's in our heart. We can say any of you, we can lie out our mouth, you know, well, you know, it don't always have to say what's written on our heart, but the way we conduct ourselves, our body language, what we do, our actions speak louder than words. Right. That's what shows what's really in our heart. I can't say I love you, and you know, and I might have a knife in, in your back. Hmm. That's the action. That shows exactly really what, you know, what I, I if I love you or not. So, like I say, our actions speak louder than words. Pay attention to what people do. Listen to what people do, not what they say. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24 and 4. We are blessed to have our teenager here again today. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to get on about half naked, but she here. She in the building. <laughs> Yes, we might want to look at that word deceive. Did I can't remember? Did we study deception? I don't think so. That we might deception. Last week. That was last week. Okay, we studied deception. Deception. We got to pay attention. No desire. That's right. So now I'm gonna look at deception. See what you know. Talk about that. We got to know. You know, deception. You know, things don't look the way they seem sometimes. You know, everything that shine and glitter ain't gold. You know, you know, some diamonds, you know, may look like diamonds, but it might be just glass. You know, cubic zirconians look like diamonds, but they ain't worth that as much as diamonds are. You know, you can be deceived, you know, by people saying one thing, you believe what they say, but then they doing something else. You know, like our, 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 our the person where we say, surely. He deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden by putting that surely on that. You know, watch what they say. Watch what them adjectives and stuff, that spin that they put on stuff. You know, make sure you listening to the whole word. If you ain't sure, you look, 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 I got to go check this for myself. Sometimes we need to look in the word right then and there because so much is being said and done nowadays. You know, it's going out so fast. <laughs> I had a young minister in Georgia. She say, slow down. So, <laughs> she tell me in a minute, slow down. You taking me too fast. That's what we, we got to be. You got to make sure you know what people are saying. You get, I can't just have people give you paperwork to sign. You got to know what you're signing. Yeah. Mess around right there and sign your life away. Yeah. You know, there's some scam artists out here. Yeah. You know, that manipulation, they'll manipulate you, not to benefit you, but to get their title loan paid. They, to get their gas in their vehicle. Yep. You know, that, yeah. that deception. Make sure, it, if it sounds too good to be true, double check it. Yeah. Normally it is. Yeah. That's why I tell you about them telemarketers and stuff. That be calling. Yeah. Make sure that you know, yeah. don't be signing nothing. Don't be sending no money over the internet. Don't be, don't be giving them no credit card numbers. Don't be doing none of that. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. And if they say something out their mouth, let it, you know, you got to see some evidence. You know, we have men that know how to say things and whisper sweet nothings in a woman's ear, but they ain't never got no evidence. Uh, yeah. that's, a, that's deception. That's a sign of deception right there. 
They tell you all this sweet nothing, and then when you look around, the, your money gone and the man gone too. <laughs> right. So he telling you all this stuff. Make sure he can, you know, vouch with you. He got evidence. You know, he got to show proof. The proof is in the pudding. That's what it is. The proof is in the pudding. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. Uh, charity suffers, suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity vaunted, vaunted not itself, is not puffed up. When you love somebody, y'all know we're talking about love, all the love. Charity is love. When you love somebody, you don't want to manipulate them. Love. You don't want to deceive them. Yeah. You don't want to do them wrong. So when you have love, you don't have manipulation. That's where that comes in. So as long as we, we are to love our neighbor, and I believe I read in there too, we're supposed to love our enemies. Yeah. Yeah. So if you love them, you don't even want to manipulate and deceive them. Yeah. You know, people do us wrong. I was sharing today, if you know people do us wrong in order to get that hate, and hurt and heartache out of, you know, stick, keep that out of there. When people do you wrong, just start praying. Praying for them. Bless them. Right. You know, uh, just as you praying and blessing them, you know, you keeping your heart clear or whatever. You don't know what God going to do. The blessings of God make it rich and add no sorrow. You know, right. sometimes when you say bless, you know, bless them, God know the blessing that they need. Sometimes it's a butt whooping. You know, sometimes it's, you know, something like that. But, you know, you play God's blessings on their life. Yes. And, you know, whatever God say do. That's why I say, you know, whenever somebody do something to me, I pray God's blessings on them. And, you know, some of them, the ground open up. Some of them got to go through stuff or whatever. But as long as my heart is clear, I play God's blessings on them. You know, and I shake the dust. I ain't got to be in that person's face no more. I forgive and I let go. I give it to God yes. or whatever. But as long as you have love, you be okay. You ain't trying to manipulate. You ain't trying to get revenge on that person. Let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 11, 13. 2 Corinthians 11, 13. Yeah, God will bless you. You don't even know the blessing coming. But such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Deceitful workers. We just had witness of that. You know, one that was acting like, but they was doing things that Jesus wouldn't do. They was trying to suffice for their own self. You know, they was doing Ezekiel 34. Y'all know I talk about that all the time. Living off God's people. And people is not, he's, he's not pleased. God is not pleased. Living off God's people. We living in a pandemic. And you going to get your gas money, your, 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 your light bill, everything off God's people. Who's struggling to pay their light bill. That don't make no sense. How you going to preach to somebody while you taking from them? That don't make no sense. I just don't believe in that. Um, let's go to... Um, 2 Corinthians, oh, 14, the next verse. And no, and no marvel, by Satan and himself, is transformed into an angel of light. That's right. He trans, the, the devil himself yeah. is transformed into an angel of light. Yes. We got to make sure we look, know what we're looking at. <laughs> and the way we do that, I was saying it earlier today. The reason how we get deceived is we start backing away from this word. We just back away. We stay away from it. We back away. And you know, when we don't get back in our word, we don't sit with God. Because the, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So when we don't sit with God in his word and we start backing away, we start watching TV too much. We start hanging out here too much. We putting God on the back burner. I'll get to him. I'll get to him. It, the, the enemy can come in and deceive you at any given thing, any given time. Because you ain't been in the word. You'll know the word got to remain fresh in your spirit. If you don't do nothing but roll over and read a scripture a day. That's right. At least a scripture. That's right. 
re keep the word in your heart. You got to feed your spirit, man. You can't feed your spirit, man, all this tangible stuff, all this other stuff. You know, that's why we get addictions, because we're trying to fill the spiritual void with tangible items. You know, we were talking about, you know, gambling, um, sex, cigarettes, alcohol. That's people that's trying to fill that, that place that only belongs to God. Yes. You can't give that to nobody else, and, and can't nothing else fill that. Only God can fill that. You have to be in the word. Um, so as we go away from God's word, the enemy can come in and deceive us. He can make something sound like God. Put that surely on there. <laughs> surely. <laughs> All right. Let's go to uh, verse 20, just a little bit down. Are ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man desire you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. That's manipulation. You suffer. You know, oppression, that's bondage. Mm. You know, people struggling, but I'm taking the church offering and I'm paying my, my, mm. my bills. You know, I ain't benefiting the church. The church rent behind. I'm taking the church offering and paying my stuff mm -hmm. and let the church deal with the church. Or maybe I got good intentions. I'm going to just borrow it here for this minute, but ain't nobody guaranteed the next day. You mess around here, you do this, we still lose the church. I just don't believe in people manipulating, you know, the church people. And it's, in this situation, it's elder abuse because this individual knew that these individuals didn't know nothing about nothing. Mm. And when I got word of it, I told y'all, if I had my way, they ain't got to worry about no roof over their head no more. And they, right. If we give three square meals a day, I just believe in that. You don't manipulate, you don't do people wrong like that. Right. God is not pleased. She just read a scripture the other day. I told her today it was Mark 14 and 20. That's not one of our scriptures, but it talks about how God does, I mean, they get paid worse the ones who do against the widows. The widows ain't just something, you know, a woman that has a husband died. The widows of the church or the mothers of the church, anybody that don't have, you know, like the men helping them, you know, stuff like that. Single moms, anything. Take care of the, the widows, the women and the children or whatever. Right. Right. When you sitting there living off of them, God is not pleased. No, he's not. It talks about that. That's at Mark 14 and 20. Look that scripture up. Anybody that's doing that, God takes care of his own. Let's go to uh, Galatians 2 and 4. Galatians 2 and 4. Y'all know we get into our scriptures that we just went through the works of the flesh. Galatians 2 and 4. And that because of false brethren, unaware brought you in, who came in privately to spy out your liberty, our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Yes. People that come in unaware. People that come in and put their, their name in spots. Ain't nobody asked them. Ain't nobody invited them. The enemy just makes his own self to come in, manipulate. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that other people don't know how to do certain things. He come in and put his own name on the board. You know, he do what he want to do. So he can manipulate people. And do and get his way, access to the money, so he can pay his bills, mm. pay his credit cards. Mm. I mean, we saw some stuff on this bank statement. She said it made her stomach to sick. Oh. I was hot as fish. I said, y'all better hurry up and get me up out this bank before I act a fool up in here, cause that's it. Don't make no sense to be like that. Mm. Paying your how, how paying your credit card bill got to do with the church. Uh. Three paid three credit card bills and a title loan. Ooh. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, using the church. People struggling out here. That ain't right. No, it's not. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 1. What y'all do about it? We just took everything back. They don't have access to the account. We're going to go forward. Now, if they want to act a fool, we can press charges. That's what I 
stealing. That is, it's stealing. So, like I said, that's got to be a collective board thing. Because, yeah, they got to come up with that money and pay it back in the end. So, that's what I would do, but I'm not the board. I'm not on the paperwork. I'm not on the board. I'm not on the bank account. All I am is the pastor. I go in, leave, and go home. Pray and go home. I don't want none of that part. God was blessing me before this position. He going to continue to bless me. Amen. I don't want no part of the, no, none of that. I told him that. I say, if I come in and turn the key and the door open and I flip the light switch on and the lights come on, I know we good. I don't need no part of that. I don't have to micromanage. You know, these are grown folks. I'm not going to teach them like, treat them like children. Grown so folks. They need to be taught, be stole from God. You stole from God. That's why I say, I'm going to let God handle it. Yes. But don't come in my face. Because I'm going to let you know about yourself. Because I'm upset that you use people like this. You right. misrepresent God. It's a godly anger that I have. That's why I told y'all better hurry up and get me out of this bank. That man got to type it quick. <laughs> he got to type it quick. Because the more and more we found out, the more hot that I got. When we walked out of there, she did the Holy Ghost dance before we got to the door. <laughs> I'm like, y'all better get me up out of here. I don't like people that do people like this. This is wrong. Right. So, like I say, I got the bank statements. I'm finna tally it up. I'm finna tally all of it up that wasn't for the church. And that's how much that individual gonna owe. Now, that they better not cut in my face. I'm gonna see God and see what God wanna do about it. But uh, mm. I would do that. But like I say, I'm not the board. I'm not on the board. All I did was accept the invitation to be the pastor. Right. I'm not on the board. That's their decision. I'm not going to make them do anything that they don't want to do. So, but I'm sure if they get to, if, if, if they get any kind of flack behind it, I'm sure they're going to want to go prosecute because they already tired of dealing with this individual. Mm -hmm. And they were sick when they saw all of that. Mm -hmm. I had three board members with me mm -hmm. sitting there. We was riding deep, wasn't we? <laughs> we was riding deep. So, yeah. Whatever God say do, we just going to pray. We're not going to do anything out of flesh. We're not going to do anything out of revenge or vengeance. Mm -hmm. We're just going to see what God say do. But uh, let's go to Galatians 5.1. 5.1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That means get back to your word. Stay in your word. The liberty of Christ. The anointed one. Stay with God. You know, pay attention to the Holy Spirit that lives what's on the inside of you. Get back to him. He gives the, the spirit of discernment. He'll let you know what's right and what's wrong. He'll let you know, hey, hey, that ain't me. Something don't sound right. Listen. You know, he'll he'll let you know. When and, and, and That's the thing. A lot of red flags was being shown. But, you know, as we get to go, we're going through. We ain't paying attention. I'm just thankful that God, God stopped that thing. We could have been sitting here a whole different way. We could have been sitting here with a bank account that was empty and four other people that's, or yeah, four other people that's got to an answer for something that they didn't take. We could have been sitting there. We could have been sitting in that spot. But uh, thank God that, uh, yeah, God had been talking to Minister House the whole time. And, um, she was talking to me, and I'm like, that don't sound right. That don't sound right. Quiet as cat, we went on and did what we got to do. Right. So um, it's sad that we had to go through that. We pray for this individual, but you don't use God's people like that. You make, yeah, he going to whoop up, but you make God, you, that's why people don't want to come to church. They say we got just as much hell inside the church as they got out there. They make it look bad. That's why you can't save us. The cells don't want to come in no more. But uh, let's go to our, our favorite scriptures. We was there for like, what, two months? Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Y'all already know what we talk about there. That's where manipulation come from. Come from the works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are the adultery, fornication, unclean, Cleanliness, a lascivious, idolatry, 
Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, and heresy. Envy, murders, drunkenness, reverence, and lots such like, of which, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not enter the kingdom of God. You hear what it's saying? They that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we it's time to pray for that individual. Because that's why you people manipulate, is they trying to fulfill the works of the flesh, idolatry, fornication. They trying to lasciviousness, y'all know that's all over the place. They trying to fulfill those works of the flesh. It ain't trying to fulfill God, the fruits of the spirit, it's trying to fulfill their flesh. Let's go to um Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Next. The next four. What? And therefore having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith which with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me that others may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Okay, that's it. The, the armor of God. So that tells us we got armor on, that means we in a spiritual warfare. We're not at a ballet. Right. You know, we're going to have to fight for some things. You know, prayer is a part of our armor. Yes. We got to talk to God. Are we talking to God? Not only are we not, you know, sometimes we ain't getting to our word and our Bible, but are we at least talking to God? Mm -hmm. Do we still at least have a connection with God? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, that's the whole armor talking about the breastplate of righteousness. That's not our righteousness. If we put it on a breastplate, we put it on somebody else's righteousness. That's not self-righteousness. So we got to put on God's righteousness. We can't puff our own self up. We got to, you know, we got to glorify God. The helmet of salvation. That means we got to have our head right. Our head got to be free, grounded in the word of God. It's, it can't be our own thoughts of what we want to do. What I say all the time, I feed shot with the gospel of the preparation of peace. We walk places, that don't mean when we get there it's going to be peace. That means wherever we walk, we should bring peace. And if we can't bring peace, if, if we manipulating, we can't bring peace. We got to be able to bring peace to wherever we walk to. If, if when we show up, chaos show up, we ain't serving God. We ain't serving the right one. We got to make sure when we show up, peace show up. Yes. You know, I told y'all before, when I show up, the atmosphere change. I've been in buildings where the messages change. They start preaching on me. Mm. You know, mm. when truth show up, you know, the, the whole atmosphere, everything change. Yeah. Do, do we, are we in our word to what we impact the world like that? We need to be in our word. And when we, when we walk in the building, they know God done walked in there. They know that, ooh, that's something different about her. You never know who is sitting there in need of a touch. 
or in need of a word from God. I was telling her earlier today, sometimes just your presence sitting in a room is all somebody needs. We was at Blueberry Hill today having a business meeting. I paid for it. The church didn't pay for it. <laughs> we was at Blueberry Hill having a business meeting, and there was two big old hefty Paul Bunyan looking dudes at the table next to us. And they got to talking, we got in conversation or whatever. And as we was leaving, I gave my business card. I said, if y'all ever want to go to the church, I am a pastor. We talked about pastor. He said, oh, you a pastor? You know, I said, I am a pastor. If you ever want to go to the church, this is, you know, you call me or whatever. And uh, as we come by, God led to have Mother Shalon hug them, give them a hug. That's what they needed. They was like, go out want one of them hugs too. They was brothers. One was from Memphis, and he was trying to tell his brother to come down here and live or whatever. You don't know how God going to use you to bless somebody. That's so true. They was blessed just by that hug. Mm. They took that card and, and they put it in their pocket. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them show up at the church or whatever. But I'm just saying, somebody might just you smile at people. Do we look like same face when we walk by people? If somebody say hello, do we say hello back? You know, black folks good for that. Walk by and don't say nothing. Even if they right. don't say nothing. Right. But if we in the desert with a glass of water and only a cracker, you know, you're going to be wanting somebody to give you share something. Right. You know, we ought to be more cordial and speak or whatever. Mm -hmm. We ought to be, you know, love one to another. Right. You know, that crab is in a bucket mentality, it's time out for that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's enough to go around for everybody. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. That's why I tell everybody, they didn't stop making cars in the world. They didn't stop making cars that same color. If y'all want one, go get it. Don't hate. Don't act a fool, you know. You know, you can go get your own. Whatever you want. Yeah, it don't make no sense to be like that. But um, let's go to 1 Timothy 4 and 1. We almost through them. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Yeah, Timothy Youngster. We talking about manipulation today. Make sure you ain't being manipulated. You know, as women, we should know that. Because, you know, men, they, they you know, manipulate. They're, how many of us, you know, some of us are single parents because we've been manipulated. We've gone through some stuff. You know, we just believe, we, you know, we put our trust because we're emotional. We put our heart in the hands of somebody that don't have our best interests at heart. Right. And, you know, we get manipulated. We got to put on our eyes of discernment. We got to pay attention. Yes. You know, we just listen to that still small voice. God in our heart. He, hey, hey, that ain't me. You better look again. He'll give you warning before destruction. Yes, Are we care, keen to hear his, what he say? He give us warning before destruction. That's what I'm saying. That warning kept coming. If we hadn't listened to the warning, we'd be sitting here preaching a whole different message. Talk about she got it and gone. And all these people got to pay for this. Right. But you got to be keen to God's ear. You don't ever know what he, when, who, who he, and you got to be, don't be careful. Be careful about who you looking at because just because you may not like them, God may put a word in their mouth for you. That's right. You don't know who, sometimes when I don't like it, and you know, I'm going to find a belt just in case you want to get crazy on me. But sometimes she'll say something to me and God be done spoke. Through her, don't don't swear your head on. <laughs> she'll, she'll say something. God be done spoke. I'll be like, oh Lord, you know, you know, it could come anywhere. Or I'll be doing something. She'll 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 say something, and God done spoke to me, and you know, it be gonna convicted me. I'm like, you 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 had to use her. You could have used somebody else. You know, I be that talk to God like that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a relationship with my father. He knows it's in there anyway. I might as well be honest about it. Right. So I said, like, you could have used anybody else. You could have used a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if Buddha would have sat there and said something out of his mouth, I'd have been out took off running. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, God can use anybody in anything. You, you know. Monkey. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I, I did a message in, you know, ASS is in the Bible. I did a message, don't, don't, what I say, don't allow, don't allow God to make an ASS out of you. 
I don't feel comfortable because she is saying it. Don't allow God to make an ass out of you. And that's where the scripture comes from. And it's true, isn't it? Because if a donkey can hear God and you can't, yeah. something wrong with you. That don't make no sense. We got to be keen to hear. I mean, and we can't hear God because we ain't in our word. We ain't in the Bible. Yeah. That's how we get that surely. Then men come up next whisper yeah. sweet nestle surely. Yeah, I'm gonna marry you surely. We gonna have a house and a home surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We gonna do this, that, and the other. We gonna next thing you know, you barefoot, butt naked, and pregnant, and he gone off. Surely, <laughs> the antichrist. That's how the Antichrist use people. They use vessels close to you. Right. Be careful of who you trust. Anybody mm -hmm. can have a bad day. Yeah. And you know, you got, you, you're got you not sure whether they're hearing the Lord. They may be hearing the Antichrist. Anybody can fall. Even the very elect can be deceived. Y'all know that scripture too. The very elect can be deceived. Let's not us be one of those, the very elect that be deceived. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3. We didn't do first. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. That's what we're talking about. We in that, that, that end time where, you know, they've been, we giving over to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We in the end time where people losing their faith. People, are, I was saying earlier today, mental illness, that's the, the, the industry I'm in, it is really trending now. People are literally losing their minds, yeah. and not on purpose. They literally is losing their minds, you know. Like, it's I, it's almost like recession proof, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. somebody losing their minds somewhere, yeah. you know. And with that, the very elect is being deceived. You know, the Bible says it like this, he leads you over to a reprobate mind. Yes. If you ain't putting your faith in God and being in the word and doing, you know, listening to the word and keeping your mind in the word, it's just start leaving you. Dementia, Alzheimer's, all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep yourself in the word of God, God can keep you. Amen. God, y'all know me with the COVID and everything. God has kept me. Yes. You know, because I stay in the word. If I ain't in the word, I got some. I don't listen to the radio. I listen to YouTube or something, you know, that's of the gospel. My mind has always got some of the word going somewhere. Or if it ain't nothing, it's gospel music, anointed gospel music. Not that stuff they just put out there to make a dollar. It's got to be anointed, coming off the hearts of somebody that knows something about Christ. Right. There's some that's out there just putting music just out there because it sound good. But it ain't trying to save nobody. It ain't trying to do nothing. But, um, music music. yeah. Kirk Franklin music. Yeah, I can't say nothing about him. I got some saved on him. <laughs> yeah, I brought in. But, you know, some of them, they, they go up. They um, Some of them, you know, they get saved, you know, after a while. They go through some things, and their music get better. You know, we can't, you know, ain't nobody privy that they can't fall. We've seen some pastors or leaders or prophets that they've fallen, but you know, they've gotten back up. You know, God is married to the backslider. Yes. So we can't judge and we can't, you know, just like this individual that did what they did, I can't say God ain't gonna save her. I can't say I ain't gonna see her in heaven one day. But I'm just saying right now, she ain't doing the work of the Lord. She ain't on, she on the Antichrist side. She one of the very elect that's been deceived. So that's what I'm saying, we gotta be careful. We not better, we, there's no respect to a person. That's right. We could be one of the very elect that's deceived. That's, right. that's why I say always, anybody that you got odd against or whatever, you know, pray for them. That way you don't get that in your heart. Yes. Somebody do something wrong, pray for them. Play the blessings of God on them. That's right. You know, that God bless them, you know, exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask or think. Yes. You know, send it that way you keep your heart clear. You never know, one day, that person may or may not ever come back and apologize or whatever, but you know your heart is right. Forgiveness yeah. is for you, not for them. Yes. Yeah. So make sure you keep your heart, because when every time he out the class, you can't say, Lord, well, I was going to get ready. It'd be too late. <laughs> mm -mm. Is, is holding a grudge over so-and-so worth you going to hell? No. It's time to get it right. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go to 2 Timothy. Three, one through five. 
Yeah, we had a ball today. They're that form of godliness again. All these type of people. You know, despisers of those that are good. Traitors. Yeah, having that form of godliness. It's a turn away. Don't hang out. Don't entertain people like that. Because you entertain people like that, you be in the company, you know, be careful of the company that you keep. Yeah. So you entertain people like that, you get start drifting away from God. Because you entertaining the enemy. He said, you either for me or you against me. That's right. So why would you entertain somebody that's against me? So you so got to be you, in your word. So how can you entertain them that you don't want to entertain them? You got to get in your word. And, and, and as long as you got your word being, you stay in your word, the enemy can't stay. The enemy got to flee. You got to stay in your word. You got to fill your cup with the word. You just constantly that's like, say, I stay in my word. That's why I'm ready in season and out of season. I ain't have time to say this today, but I know God is in my heart. I stay with my word. So therefore, the God's word is written on the tablet of my heart. So when I speak, even when I raise my children, I parent my children, I speak the word of God comes off my tongue because it's what's on my heart. You can only speak what's on your heart. So you got to get the word in your body, in your heart, to the point where you speak, it ain't nothing but the word of God coming out. And at the word of God, you know, at the name of Jesus, the devil got to flee. He can't stay around. He can't stay around truth. You got to fill yourself with truth. This is truth. Yes, it is. You got to fill yourself and keep yourself stayed up with truth. Because if you stay in truth, that the, the word of God would be a lie if that was the case. You got to fill yourself up with the word. Write the word on your heart. That's what you got to do. On your heart. To the point where, you know, you can't be just thinking with your mind. You got to make sure it's in your heart. To where every time I open my mouth, I'm bringing out scripture. And it ain't, I'm not doing it on purpose. It just flows out. Right. When I talk, people be like, you just like, I be like, you cash your purse. I be in business. They be like, where did that come from? They don't know it came from the Bible. But it's just what's on my heart. Right. I got. I can't preach nothing what's on my other than what's on my heart. I be running group. I don't be trying to be in the Bible. You know, you can't mix church and state. But it's what's on my heart. I, it's not that I'm trying to do it intentionally, but it comes out because that's what's on my heart. And right. them people, that my groups be full because they getting spiritually fed, they getting physically fed, and they getting mentally fed. So they don't have no problem with it. Now Medicaid coming now, I, it's what's on my heart. It ain't that I'm trying to do it. So you got to write it on your heart to where you think and do and act nothing but the word of God. But what's the word that don't work? Sometimes it don't work. It does work if you get in the word of God. Amen. You ain't got that yet. You got to sit there. You got to be, I mean, you got to be reading your Bible every day. Every single day. Listening, you got to protect your gate. You got to be listening to something that's the gospel, some anointing, you know, something. I, I submerge myself in gospel music, anointed music. Um, I don't listen to the radio. I don't listen to the news. If I get any news and be on the internet or somebody done told me, you submerge yourself in the things of God. And whatever you place yourself in, that's what's going to come out. Now, if you out with the world and hanging out with other things, and they call them sorcerers and horoscopes and terror, whatever you... Whatever atmosphere you in, that's what's going to come out. I submerge myself with the word of God. They always talk about, I, matter of fact, there was a lady that told my daughter, say, your mama stay home too much. She need to come out son. I'd rather be at home with Jesus than be out hanging. That's just what I like to do. I, I like getting rid of the kids. 
and be at home by myself, just me and Jesus. Me and the Bible. The word is good to me. It feeds my soul. It feeds my spirit. You know, I'd rather have that. Sometimes I'd be in there all day and forget to eat. I'm diabetic. I'm supposed to eat every two hours. But the Lord done fill me up every day. That's why I like my Saturdays. I can't stand having to take her to choir, I mean not choir, praise dance practice on Saturday. Because that breaks me from what I want to do. I'm going to be so glad when I can throw her in the Uber. She be old enough to get in the Uber here in the minute. I'm like, girl, you better go and get that Uber and go on up out of here. I ain't got, that car ain't got to move on Saturday. My son, get, you better get an Uber. I'm with the Lord. That's why I'm, I'm be, I consecrate Saturday, Shabbat Saturday. I, I stay in the bed. If I'm going to sit there and meditate on God, I be November 11th. God say don't be anxious for nothing. But I'm just saying, Lord, I, you know, I'm not trying to be anxious, but I can't wait. She be 18, and she be legally able to get in an Uber by herself. Now, the people have been doing it illegally. But, you know, the, the, the what you call terms of conditions say you got to be 18. I'd be so glad when she said, Mom, I got to go somewhere. I'm going to get on my Lyft app and call her Lyft or Uber. Go on about yourself. And I can watch her get to where she going from that app. So I can see what's going on. But I'm just saying, I'd be so happy. That's going to be another driver for me. Mm -hmm. um, She's going to be chauffeured everywhere because I ain't, that cat like ain't moving. On Saturday, that's my day, me and the Lord. That's, I'm, I'm waiting for that. November 11th, y'all know that's her birthday. That's my mom's birthday. Yep, November 11th. That's, I'm waiting on that. That's a, I'm, a, I'm trying to throw her a big old birthday party because I'm going to kick her boot her out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kid free. I got all the dope. <laughs> I got people that can crack be accountable for themselves. Let's uh woo, we're six minutes late. Let's get the last two. Let's do Hebrews 13, verses 8 and 9. Hebrews 13, verses 8 and 9. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday mm. and today and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. But it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, but which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. We talk about Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's how that begins. Mm -hmm. It say, don't be carried away about with divers and strange doctrines. People come in and tell you stuff, whisper stuff in your ear that don't line up with this word of God. For it is good. For it's a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Is our heart established? Grace is the unmerited favor of God. Is our heart established with the unmerited favor of God? Or are we, you know, wavering, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine? Can somebody come whisper something up in our ear? Or are we stuck on the word of God? That's what I'm saying. We got to make sure, do we know that it's God? Or do we? I tell you all the time, don't say amen to everything if you don't know. Right. Make sure you say amen to what you know, because you don't know what you put in your stamp on. Yes. Don't say amen if you don't know it. Yes. If you say, wait, hold up, put your Baptist finger up. Say, hold up, let me go check that before you know I put my amen on that. Make right. sure it's right. Yes. Because whatever you put in your mouth to, you I mean you can't co-sign for other people's stuff, mm -hmm. and you don't know. That's a whole nother message. But I'm saying, you people who come bringing you papers to sign, you ain't read nothing in the document. Come on now. You don't know what you sign. You may just be signing your life away. You know, don't co sign for nothing you don't know. Make sure you look in the Word of God. Make sure it's there. And don't have no surely on that. Make sure it's, it's established, right? They say exactly what it is. Line up on line, precept on precept. Don't just co sign for something you don't know. Don't fall for the okie doke. <laughs> Last scripture, 1 John 4 and 20. 1 John 4 and 20. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he, had, for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? How you gonna run around talking about you love God, but the people, your brother and sister in hate, front of you, you don't love them. Yeah, you sitting there eating a big old double-double 
and your brother sitting right there hungry. Somebody that, you know, you sitting there eating in his face. Yeah. You know, the homeless person. That's somebody that ain't got no empathy. That's somebody that ain't got no, you know, no morals, no. I can't even eat in front of people. I, I'd rather sit there and not eat at all until that person get away from me. Because it makes me feel bad. That's what happened here at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> this young man came in, boy, and I'm, I'm looking around. He was staring me right in the face. Oh Lord, I don't like when they stare. So I say, I said, young man, you want a, you want a burger and fries and a soda? Yes, yes, ma'am. So I went and ordered him one. See that? That's why he did that. Yeah. yeah. Now, one time. I have thought some, somebody left, and this person was looking at me, but I wouldn't give that person nothing, and when I looked around, he, it was gone. My mom could have said it could have been an angel. Could have been. And I have to ask that, Lord, forgive me. Uh-huh. Because you may, what's that scripture? You may be entertaining angels unaware. You know, God's, you know, things happen to God. That's a test to check your spirit, you know. So anytime I see something, like that time I told y'all I was pulling through the back down the driveway, got my coffee, was gone, but the man standing there. And I said, I ain't got nothing. And God made me turn that car directly into a parking spot and go give him that $10 that was in my purse. Mm -hmm. And he went right in there and got himself. He said, go feed your brother. Mm -hmm. Go feed your brother. He wouldn't let me go. That car came directly out there and I pulled right into a parking lot. Directly, perfect. He parked it just perfect. When this, I went, we got that. I said, I ain't got nothing. Lied just that quick. I went in there and, and dug in my purse. There was a $10 bill in there. I went and gave it to him. He went in there and got him something to eat. He said, go feed your brother. I was on my way to work. And God blessed me later on that day. You never know. Things happen because that may be your test. Pass, you know, get your test, pass your lesson or whatever. What if you were sitting out there? You know, and if, if you ever... Yep, if you ever get to a point where, say, you did that that day and you asked for repentance and you asked for forgiveness, but there may have been some God may wanted to give you. You may be holding up your blessings. When you're clo- your hands like this, you're holding up your blessings. My hands are always like this, open, gullible. That's how I got all that I get because God blesses me. My hands are always open. Right. You know, I even to the point if they manipulating, if they if they telling me wrong, you know, Lord, I gave it out of love, you know, that's my thing. But I know I'm not gonna get myself out of a house and home. You know, right. you gotta be have you know have common sense, you know, of your stewardship. You know, I give, you know, cause my, I I make money, money don't make me. I really don't care nothing about money. I just use money as a tool, you know, to go. I'm not one of those ones to sit there and hold money because, like that she said in the scripture today, talking about if the birds of the air, if he feed them. What more than he gonna do for us? Right. I don't want. I don't worry about that gas in that Cadillac. God put it in there. Yes. God keeps it on the road. He maintains it. I know some of them that buy these cars and these they 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 raggedy. They falling apart. They ain't maintained. You know all that. God got that. I say, look. That's your, every time I get a bill for, I'm Lord, that's your bill. You can, you did this. I ain't gonna stress myself at it. Every time that car note come, Lord, that's yours. It's here. You gonna pay it. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't have no no clock that I type I, I check in every day. Right. I'm out here on God's grace for real. Out right. here in the deep. I got to believe God. I got to say with God with the word. If I start slipping, you start all seeing all kinds of stuff start falling away from me. But I stay with God because I know I need Him too much. I learned that when I with my children. Matthew being out there a year and a half in a gutter, you know, and look at look at him now. Got my grandbabies, you know, both of their birthdays is next month, too. 11, 5, 11, 12, 11, 11. Y'all know I'm celebrating my birthday the whole month. What we on? What's the day? 11. The 11. So this is 11 day I've been, the 11 day. Y'all been, I've been celebrating 11 days already. Mine the 28th. Y'all know at the end of the month, that's mine. I, you know, we off on my birthday because, you know, it's always a holiday. The Halloween holiday, that four days that the banks is closed. I don't ever have to work. I'll be you know, at home or whatever. But I don't do it like I do New Year's Day. I be at home because everything closed on New Year's Day. I just be in my house. <laughs> That's I call that the pastor's day off because you can't do nothing. Everything closed. The banks closed, the government bill, everything closed. I say that's the pastor's only day off. 
Because <laughs> I can stay at home and ain't got to do nothing, nothing. But anyway, that's all our scriptures today. Somebody pray us out. Good Bible study. Let me say something. Hmm? Okay, you know when I have you say, uh, when you give, you uh, never know how God will give you back or yeah. how he bless you. So that made me think about when someone came to me the other day. Would you, would you uh, support our ministry and give me that envelope? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So I went and put my, my little offering in there. And so later on, we went to the store, and I was so surprised. I said, you blessed me with $50. See that? That's right. It's and not in what the they do. And Let I me see. I said, Lord, I said, you see blessed that? me more than I gave. See that? That's that scripture. Yeah. No, don't let me find it. That's scripture. It but but I'm saying most of the people is worried about if it's fertile ground. If you know here to give here. The bless the blessing is not in where you put it, put the blessing. The blessing is in the giving. God loves a cheerful yeah. giver. As long as you cheerfully give, God's gonna bless you. He don't care where you put it. He's gonna bless you. If I bless somebody twenty dollars and they go get a a, a a half pint of liquor, that's on them. God blesses me for giving. You know, I, I gave cheerfully. You can't give grudgingly. Tell my Lord, you, you know I got to pay my life bill. But uh, he ain't tell you give your life bill. Right. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's in the giving. Yes. Don't matter about where, where it's getting. You know, I wonder if they're going to go actually go do what they supposed to do with this. That ain't your business. Don't nobody tell you what to do with your money. <laughs> How you going to worry about what they doing? When you give it, that's it. Yeah, you yeah. give it. How you going to monitor always. and tell people what to do with their money? I always say, with, Lord, whatever they do with it, it's on them. That's on them. I gave you it freely. Give. That's right. I give and it shall be given unto you. Yeah. Press down, yeah. shaking together. Yeah. yeah. Shall men run it over? Shall men give unto your bosom? That he just say give. He didn't tell you say make sure they give it and make sure they pay their life bill with it. Make sure they eat. How you do it? Make sure they do it. Eat what they say. Right. <laughs> but I ain't got to say home care. Right. Just just give it. If you get if don't you don't. It's left up to you. Yeah. You just give it. And my thing is is I don't like giving to selfish people. You give it to them and it just stops. You know life flows. I say reciprocation is not so much it comes back to you, but if I give you something, bless you, pay it forward, and then you pay her, bless her, and then she bless, it goes. You don't just give it until somebody's selfish and it just stops there because right. it's not a cycle. You wonder why your well is ready to drop because you're giving to somebody that's hoarding. You're giving to bottomless pits. You're giving to somebody. How do you know you give it to somebody and stop? Because you look at their life. Remember I told you about the behavior. How is their life? You know, are they, you know, their personality, are they a cheerful giver? Do they help others? Or are they mean, self, you know, stingy people. You know what they look like. You know how they sound, how they talk, stuff like that. You know, so you, you give to people that, you know, you know, love makes the world go around. If I, if I love you and you don't turn around and love nobody, how it's going to make the world go around? You know, you give to, to create a flow. Everything in life, the life cycles of everything, even the, you know, the soil, the plant, the seed, you know, everything is a cycle. Yes. And if you, we give money or whatever to, you know, it don't have to be money. It could be time. Yeah, could be I give you time, but you don't get nobody else time. Money. Yeah. Clothes, clothes, anything. Yeah. So if you give into a selfish person, a self-righteous person, it just stays right there. God, you know, he loves a cheerful giver, but, you know, you get tired of just constantly giving to somebody that keeps their hands full. They ain't trying to bless and do nothing. Because you can tell when your blessing stops around, when your blessing stops. You can tell when you're just giving somebody, feeding their face. And, you know, you know, that's like constantly giving money to somebody that's strung out on drugs. You constantly giving to them. Constantly giving to them. They ain't giving to nobody. They're going to get high. If you give enough, you might they might overdose. That's what I'm saying. You can't constantly enable people. You got to give to those, you know, it goes around. Right. You know, right. that's how, if I give to you, it may not come back from you to me. But it may go to Mother Bernice and go all around. But somewhere down the line, it's going to come back to me through somebody else. You don't ever know. They have this thing, and I'm gonna, we going to close out here. <laughs> they have this thing where they got this dollar. And it has like a mark on it. 
And I don't know if they still do it. I'm going to Google it and see if they do. But they have, they probably got a few dollars to do that. But it has this mark on it. And sometimes it was in a bottle on the ocean or whatever. And if you find this dollar, you write your name or something on it that you had it. And you just send it on around the way. Next thing you know, that dollar ends up all over the place. That's how we, how love is supposed to be. You never know where you're going to see that dollar at. So, like, if I put $5 and say, please pass this farm, you know, write your name or whatever, and pass it, you never know where that dollar, that, that dollar may travel all the way to Japan yep, or wherever. True. You never know how and where it's going to get, where somebody's going to drop it off. But that's how love is supposed to flow. You know, I love you, you love her. That's how it's always supposed to go. You know, you don't want to, you know, Uncle Scrooge, you know, all them, you know, they drop Uncle Scrooge. He didn't, he didn't love nobody, but finally love got a hold of him. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. love just works. Yeah. Love comes yeah. a multitude of sins. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's I'm off my soapbox. Somebody pranced out. <laughs> Amen. I don't know. Do we want to put our teenagers away? Amen. <laughs> Pray us out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See you later, YouTube.